Hey, welcome to the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog and the Caddis Fly Shop in our vast array of fly tying videos. Today I'm going to tie a Deschutes Steelhead Yak Muddler for you. Um, so this is a really fun fly and it takes me back uh, to the era of the 70s and 80s when I was tying mudlers for Downton Hardware. Uh, we have all the materials available in links below, naturally. So we're going to get started, and the, the hook I'm using is an Arex NS115, number 4. This is the closest I can come to a TMC 700. I really like the hook. It's got a slightly downturned eye. And for thread, you know, you have options when you're when you're going to be spinning deer hair. I often use GSP, but today I'm using a Chartreuse uh, Danville's 210 denier flat waxed thread. Get a good coating of thread on the hook and a little bit of super glue. And now, you see I'm putting on, uh, this is a Lagerton flat braid. It's a peacock color. And it, it's got a little bit of stretch, a little bit of give to it. And I'm winding this on uh, to keep my body fairly, uh, fairly trim, uh, not very lumpy. Here's my yak hair. That's a combination of, uh, it's an olive and a chartreuse. I, using yak hair in mudlers is new to me this year. But I really I like it. I kind of stumbled on it. I was actually, I had a big hank of yak and I was thinking, what else can I use this for? Doggone it, I like it on motor wings. It is a little bit um, translucent. Got some kink, got a little bit of movement. Um, in short, I like it. That's a little bit of smolt blue crystal flash and um, so here we go we're gonna put the wing on this muddler um, I stacked it this is a sculpin olive um, and I'm gonna trim it exactly exactly where I'm gonna tie it in I spin up my thread and sometimes I remember to do that and sometimes I don't by spinning it, spinning it up, you can cord your thread and it will bite into the deer hair a little bit better. And then of course I use some, uh, some thumb pressure to flare that just a little bit. Now for the head, I'm not going to use um, the full piece. I'm going to trim it. And I was just kind of evening out the ends. So that's just a short little wad of deer hair. And I always have to, sometimes I stack, tie the deer hair. I think this time I'm actually, yeah, there I'm going to spin it. Got this in slow motion and it's always a little bit tricky. Um, I am not an expert hair spinner. I'm using my little stone faux hair packer there. Those, it, regardless of the brand you use, a hair packer really is an essential tool, I think, when you're uh, tying deer hair heads. Now I, I pull the deer hair back, tie in front of it a little bit, and then I'm going to get another chunk on here. It's always a little bit of a mystery. How much more do you put on? Uh, do you have to put on one more stack? Do you have to put on two more chunks? Uh, when you tie a lot of these at, at, in, a, in a row, you get it down to where you know exactly. When you do one here and there, um, it, it is, uh, you kind of have to figure it out. Now, so I'm finishing this with a whip, whip finish here. In a perfect world, I probably would have had a little bit more material on there. So let me break now. Two sizes of hair trimming scissors. And there's my little stone full packer. Um, I do find the different size scissors come in handy. Uh, 
at different times when I'm tying different shapes of these uh, mm -hmm. shapes and sizes of these deer hair heads. There's no two ways about it. Um, the, the, the two tools, the two sets of scissors are really handy. So I'm finishing, I finished this off with a whip finish instead of half hitches. Again, in a perfect world, I'd have a little bit more deer hair up front there, but this is, I'm pretty happy with this fly. I'm um, going to show you a, uh, going to show you all sides of this fly. You can fish, uh, this is a fly that I would normally fish wet or in the film damp. Hope you have fun out there. Thank you for joining us.